Okay. Welcome back to Book Date. Today we're gonna rank all the books. Wait a second, show them. Show them what? Oh. <laughs> we did it, we did it, we did it. He's a whole husband now. A whole husband. A whole and before husband. Before I was a half a husband. You were kind of like, you know, you were very hubby material, but now you're like a whole husband. Like official. You emphasize the huh. Your husband. Okay. Today, we are going to rank all the books that we read in 2023. And Aliana's going to pull all her beautiful hair out. Because <laughs> you're going to struggle so hard to make these decisions. Sorry, all right. So we've got our categories listed as mind blowing, top tier, I wish I DNF'd it, and, and that was rough. So let's see where all of these land again. How many books did you read in 2023? I think like 40 or 50. I read 30. Oh. I hit my goal, okay? I, I read a little. <laughs> Quality I, over quantity. I just remember that I was taking in all the pictures for all the books that we read. I went through your list and it took me like five minutes. And then I was like, wow, mine's is taking about 15. I crushed you this year. <laughs> Whatever. I enjoyed every single second of it. It's not a numbers game. I can't count the amount of times that I've seen you on that couch struggling with a book. And I'm just like, why don't you just put it down? Because I like, don't because believe then I can't. <laughs> Then I can't put it as red on Goodreads. Yeah, you invest all this time. You want the satisfaction of going click. And then you also start, by the end of the year, start reading thinner and thinner and thinner books so that you could bring your count up. And here I am reading Atlas Shrugged and Brandis Anderson and Stormlight Archive. I feed like, the fit. Uh-huh, okay. Anyway. Mm. Anyway. All right, Final Girls by Riley Sager. This one, I'm going to go with, it was all right. I had a lot higher hopes for it, but I read it pretty quickly. Just got kind of boring in the middle, but we've talked about that. Um, the majority of our reviews for these books are in previous videos, and we'll kind of link them below that way. If you're interested in any of these books, you can kind of go back and saw, see what we thought of them, you know, a little more in detail. This is actually a book that we both read. Okay. So the way that this is going to work is that... We have to agree. Yes. Yeah, so if one person puts it, let's say, on like top tier, you get to bring it down just one slot. If I didn't agree with it? If you, you didn't agree, like let's say you, you you did not finish it, you don't get to bring it all the way down to did not finish it. You have to just, it's I now. But oh. I would say that Red Rising for me was top tier. I say it's top tier. Yeah, that one was excellent. It's, it was actually such a pleasant, awesome, like surprise. Yeah, especially yeah. for a book that's fairly recent. All right, next. Uh, Shadow of the Wind. Oh, your favorite. <laughs> I wish oh. I had spent the almost full month that I spent reading that book. I wish I could have read a million other things I enjoyed so much, mainly because the ending and the kind of reveal of what happened to the love interest in that book just deeply sickens me, mortifies me, and I'm just really, really angry about it still to this day. Okay. Well, I actually really, really liked that book. Uh, the atmosphere was fantastic. It was very slow. It was a little weird at times, but the character and the atmosphere was amazing. So um, the inverse also works. So I'm just going to bring it up one. And now it's I. <laughs> Fine. Next. All right. Some are broken rules. Um, see, this is kind of hard because it's kind of like it was all right. I, I read it pretty quickly. Didn't not agree and didn't not enjoy it, but I didn't enjoy it as much as like Final Girls, but I don't wish I DNF'd it. Mm, actually, I'm gonna put wish I DNF'd it because I wish I, instead of reading it, I would've read something else. Damn. See, yeah. I wish I would've read that book so that I could've brought it down one more right. slot, just because it has that cover. I mean, it's definitely not as good as Final Girls. So yeah, I guess wish I DNF'd it could also mean like I wish I would've read something else. It was okay. just. All right, let's do this in order here. All right, so did read Akatar. Technically, I read A Court of Thorns and, and Roses. Technically, I also read that one. In, so. Okay, well, I'm gonna go with, mm, the first one <laughs> is definitely gonna be- Really? I wish I DNF'd it, yeah. I just- I kinda, I used, I kinda wanna put it there too. Actually. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Cause, Cause I, like, can't say, I can't say it was a I. Right, and I can't say it was rough to read. Like I read through it, but the yeah, whole series as a whole, we've spoken about it. Not our favorite kind of fantasy. And you read the whole thing. Yes, I need to know what everyone's talking about. I need to do my homework as a potential booktuber, you know? 
<laughs> we're not quite there yet, but we could be one day. And if someone catches me that I have a red Akatar, it's like, how, how can I talk? I need to know what everyone's talking it about. Might be Research. A, it might be Research. A, it might be a point of pride at that point. Right, well, that being said, the second book was much better. <laughs> so I'm gonna put that one at I. Um, A Court of Frost and Starlight, which was the novella between the, well, let's go to the one that comes next, which is A Court of Winds and Ruin. I'll put that one, that one was pretty much just as enjoyable. They kind of mixed for me because I listened to them all on audiobook like super quickly. So the middle of the series was pretty good. The Court of Frost and Starlight, now that one was rough. It's like a little novella that it was like, I guess it's like a fan service. Like it's more than I wish I didn't read it. It was, it was a rough one. <laughs> and then- And then you read another one. Yeah, that one was pretty good. Is Ma it top was it tier? Just, was it just really, really good because the previous one was so rough? <laughs> no, it might have been really, really good because it was really sexy. <laughs> Top tier? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Right. That, that feels good. The first one definitely is yeah, a lot of people's good. least favorite. Those three are typically the more popular ones, and then the a Court of Frost and Starlight just no. Nah, the next bother. ones are also. Oh, I read this last year, so that doesn't count. But I'm gonna put this as top tier. This one was really top tier. Yes, this was. So surprisingly, oh, such a great Oh, that's the one book. that you liked that, that you then didn't like the next Yes, book. so uh, Christina Loren, In a Holidays, I read Christmas of 2022, absolutely loved that book. It was such a like surprising, fantastic five-star read for it being like a little holiday romance. So then I tried to like do the same thing for 2023 in reading something that, you know, would make me feel the holidays and enjoy it. And this was not it. This one was rough and I've talked about it. It's like one of the worst books I've read that year, but it was so, so thin that I kind of just read it in a few hours and... Next up, tomorrow, tomorrow, and tomorrow. I'm gonna put this one as DNF to just because it was just, it just felt kind of pointless to me. Yeah. did not like the characters. I, I could have gone my life without reading that book. I'll leave that there as well. Okay. Uh, this one was all right. What is it? Um, Dreamland by Nicholas Sparks. It was right. Standard Nicholas Sparks romance. No, was a little surprising. It kind of had that vibe where there's two different storylines going and you're wondering how the heck are they gonna connect? Mm -hmm. And then it connected so cool that like, that's one definitely memorable, so. Yeah. But not quite top tier. Oh, The Housemaid? I'm gonna put that at top tier. I need to read that. That was fun. That one was definitely just a page turner, really fast paced, really quick, fun read. Was it the best writing of all time? No, but was it a top tier in the sense of it was highly enjoyable and probably a book I'll recommend kind of generally for anybody that would make a really cool series or movie? Yeah. Happy Place. I'm gonna put this one. This is Happy Place by Emily Henry. I'll put it out at I. Not so happy though. Mm, but I did like it more. Is it top tier? All okay, the way I'm to top sure. tier from I. There's just one. It was like, it's okay. Oh, okay. It was really good and best. Like, oh my God. Um, I'm not sure. Can I rethink it? Can I like think about it a little bit? Sure. I'm gonna we'll leave it down it. here. Oh, you're gonna leave it? Uh, I'm gonna leave it at, all right. And all if right. I want to bring it up, I'll bring it up. Okay, my turn. Let's get through this list fast. Cause like I said, I read a lot more books than you last year. Morning Star, which is actually, I believe the, the third book from the no, series. No, I think it's the second one. No, no. no I Golden think this Sun is the, is the second one. I think this one. is the second one from the Red Rising series. Amazing follow-up. Gets even bigger. The first uh, book was really, really dramatic. It really, really grabs you, but it was a much smaller scale. This one just blows it up. I would say that this one is also top tier. Just follows up with the same mood as the previous book. Jordan Peterson, 12 Rules for Life. You gave that a five stars. I give that a five out of stars. I don't know if it's mind blowing because mind blowing is just like it changes you forever. Mm -hmm. While I do think that this book does change me forever, it almost feels like it's nothing that I've really ever heard before. So I'm gonna leave it as top tier. It's like things you knew as truth. Correct. Uh, Property by America, uh, I wish I didn't finish, uh, finish it. It's just another one of the uh, political social book, people just spouting their ideas with zero recognition of why someone would disagree with them. Uh, didn't care for it at all. I wish I didn't really read it, but it was short at least. Golden Sun, this was the- The second one. No, this was the second one. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually confused. So the Golden Sun, I would say is actually also top tier, but Morning Star, I would say that one's actually mind blowing. 
I think that the third one was just mind blowing because the scale actually manages to get bigger. It actually manages to keep everything up. And it's just, it's incredible that he managed to continue raising the stakes and continuing to raise the scale. And by the end of the third book, it's not a disappointment. He thought that entire trilogy through and then wrote it out. And that's why it felt like an amazing, complete experience. I have no idea why this is not a series and why it's not uh, a movie series or a television series by now. So anyway, highly recommend uh, the Red Rising trilogy. All right, the only one left. I this was remember. another Riley Sager. I'm gonna call this one top tier. Not quite mind blowing, but <laughs> definitely a book that made me feel all the feels it was suspenseful, it was like sad, it was also a little happy, it was kind of moody, it was kind of creepy. It was like everything. And I think it all tied in together at the end so well, but not so mind blowing. Like I wish there would have been like maybe one more twist, but oof. This is where I feel like we're playing a game and I'm about to reverse Uno you. No, it's not I'm all sorry. right. That's I'm not sorry. all right. I'm gonna have to. No, 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 I, I no, no. Don't. I just don't think, you know, I just don't think it's really there. <laughs> we'll think about it. It's next to Happy Place. I'll think about it by the end of the Okay, but like, by the end of the episode. you wouldn't move it past. You wouldn't move it any lower than I? I. No, for sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. It was good. Okay. It was I just good. don't know about top tier, man. Like, it was just a good horror, but it wasn't. You know, it wasn't. You. It didn't shake anything up. And, I get you. you know, so I understand. All right, here we go. Come on. Fourth wing. Sorry, is going too mind blowing because it has been a very long time since fantasy has tickled me <laughs> the way fourth wing has. You moved it to top tier. You're lucky you're getting that because if it was up to me, it'd be an I. But I only get one slot down, so. Now, would you call a man called Otto mind blowing? No, I would call it top tier. I agree. I would call it top tier. It was like just across the board, like just such an amazing. It's like if life, what was it I call it? If, lifetime, if it was a lifetime movie, but actually good. <laughs> yeah. It, that's what it would be at. We have a video going through all of the best books that we read yeah. in 2023, and that good includes Red Rising, A Man Called Otto, Fourth Wing. So all of those really top tier, mind blowing books, we go in, in depth yeah. in our best of 2023, which we'll link below. All right, the next one's also me. It's The Good Earth, which is kind of like a period piece set in like a, in China during kind of like a Great Depression. It's between these two right here. Ooh. I'm gonna say it was like, it was good. It was like, right, but it was just a little dry. Uh, then every city is every other city. The thing about it is that the atmosphere was great. The characters were great. The dialogue was pretty funny. It was actually a very entertaining story, but it, it really does feel like an episode of Law and Order. It, you feel like it's gonna go somewhere. You feel like it's gonna have some kind of commentary and then it ends up just ending and it really didn't have any of those things. So I just can't give it that it's I just because the ending was just such a non-ending to be honest with you. <laughs> All right, next up you can do this one. Ooh. The seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. Hugo. Stop it. Okay. The seven and a half deaths by Evelyn Hardcastle Which by one? Stuart Tutton is his name. Yeah, right? Stuart Tutton. <sighs> I struggled with this one. This one was a really hard read for me. It's okay. You can put it wherever you want and I'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> the idea and the execution was so brilliant. Uh -huh. So in a way, yeah, that was definitely mind blowing but the ending was just so deflating a little. and not almost too mind blowing. <laughs> no, uh, just cheap. <laughs> yeah, no, like trying to blow your mind. So then you come up with an ending that no one would have seen coming no matter how hard you, whatever. Yeah. Um, top tier or I, I'll go with, I'll give it its due. I'll give it top tier. Okay, I was gonna leave it there anyway, cause it's definitely not all right. It's <laughs> definitely better than all right. It's basically a Inception murder mystery. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next up, we got Breath. <sighs> I'm gonna say that this book is top tier mainly because it did actually change my life. It's a, it's a book about the dangers of mouth breathing and how it's bad for you. And I was a previous ex mouth breather and it, this actually kind of helped me a lot. So I don't read a lot of self-help books, but this one actually had a, like, honestly, like considering for the rest of my life, I'm gonna, Try not to be a mouth breather. Uh, it has a pretty profound effect. It was definitely life-changing for both of us 
Thank I you. don't snore as much anymore. <sighs> okay. Uh, I wish my mom. I, no, I'm glad my mom died by Jeanette. Uh, Mac, what is it? Mac McCurdy. McCurdy. I did not watch her show on Disney Channel. I was more of Nickelodeon. a Nickelodeon. Uh, Nickelodeon. I was more <laughs> of a Cartoon Network kid. Uh, did not like this book. Uh, I'm gonna say that this one was rough, just simply because it's basically saying all the the struggles of a child uh, actor in this, you know, in that horrible industry that just kind of chews them out. Uh, but at the same time, it feels like it's glorifying that lifestyle, which I just don't think is a very good example. It ends with us. I'm gonna do this one. I'm gonna say it was I. I, I I'm there. Okay. Well, I didn't read it this year, so can I? You could you could change it. I'm gonna say it's it's I, even though <laughs> I know you're gonna bring it up, but it's because it wasn't written for me, and I also just don't think it's as influential or as an important book as people think it is. <laughs> I know it's handling a very tough topic, but I ultimately still believe that it's mainly 75% of it is female wish fulfillment, which. If we you also, haven't guessed, I'm not one of those. We also have a video where we really go far into that one and we have a really, not heated debate, but very well-rounded conversation on what people have thought of that Not book. as heated as how girls are getting while they're reading that book. Not that heated. Yeah. What? I'm gonna bring this one up to top tier. I get one. Yeah. Yep, it gets the, the book date top tier award. All right, next up, gunfight. Uh, it was basically a book written by an ex-executive in the gun industry talking about all the problems that are in the gun industry in the United States. I actually did feel like, oh, I, I did get a bunch of new things uh, from the book, but it still definitely felt like this person has a political agenda, has already picked a side, and is just kind of rooting for that side and skips over a lot of um, specific things. I actually also read Dune. Uh, the that that year did you really dude that was a long year i thought yeah, you read at the very dune. beginning no at the very beginning oh no this is sorry this is dune messiah which is the second okay uh part i would say that this one is damn i'm in between the two because it's just not as good as the first one i'm actually gonna say that it's just i i think that the majority of the things that you can grasp from the dune series is definitely in the first book and maybe in the later books so this one just didn't it doesn't affect me as much as the first one did. Now, with the first one, would you have considered that one mind blowing or top tier? Top tier. Next up, uh, Fractal Noise. Okay, so this book basically sets up a great atmosphere. These astronauts uh, in the future are trying to explore a geo, um, geological object in a planet that they discover, sets up a great atmosphere, sets up a great question, and then ends up not answering or doing anything about any of them. I recently found out that it's actually the second part in a series, but it's it, again, it just, it said so little that, it, and it did nothing. It was just, it was almost a complete waste of time. But it, honestly, the ride itself, not bad, but when you set up a question that hard and don't even attempt to solve it, um, yeah, it's extremely disappointing. Got it. Uh, the Giver, I also read this one. I would say that this one's top tier, especially if you're on the younger side. I definitely think that this is one of those books that's definitely worth reading. I can see why they would put it up on at schools uh, for people to read. Uh, How to Sell a Haunted House by uh, Grady Hendrix, I think it is. Um, it wasn't that bad. It's just the first one, I liked it so much. This one, I did not like it nearly as much, but I'm actually gonna be nice about it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it was I, uh, just because it was actually kind of interesting. There were some memorable parts that I still actually remember. So if I can remember certain parts of a book that even if I didn't like it that much, it probably wasn't all that bad. All right, so next up is Good Omens by uh, Neil Gaiman and I believe Terry Pratchett. It's a story about an angel and a demon trying to stop the apocalypse. Super, super charming. Has a bunch of like historical references for people that like that kind of thing. I would definitely say that this one is actually top tier. It's not just I. Never Split the Difference, a book about negotiation. <laughs> I can't remember almost anything about it, but I'm gonna say it was I because I do. I, you see, I remember how I felt about the book when I was reading it, but I don't remember anything about it. So I'm gonna say it was I, just to be safe. That's why he's not good at negotiating. I negotiate perfectly. I just walk away. Only good people here. I almost want to give it top tier because I'm not into true crime or you know those real life crimes or even, what would you call that? That it's it's fiction, but it's it's about just like a like a crime thriller, right? Not into that genre, but I really enjoyed this one. The characters were cool. They were really trying to do something. Uh, so I'm gonna say it was I, but 
you know, it surprised me because I'm not into that genre. So I almost want to give it a top tier for that. I actually don't think you read this one, which I don't really know why. Uh, Cloud Cuckoo Land, uh, it's basically a book of short stories and then the author just tries to join them all in and connect them all by this book that they're all referencing. Um, some of the stories uh, are a miss, but some of them are actually hard hitting, especially at the end. So I'm actually gonna give it an I, even though it's kind of more of a short story book that they kind of just tried to throw in together. But it's I pretty interesting. I haven't read that one mainly because I it's hear- It's very popular. Yeah, but I've also heard it's very long. It's not easy to get through. Yeah. So I've kind of, I don't know, I keep putting it off. Maybe yeah. one day. All right. Do you ultimately recommend me to read it? Do you think I'd like it? Mm. That's a no. That's yes, a no. I mean, honestly, it's better than a lot of the books you read, sorry. <laughs> All right, next up, uh, Brandon Sanderson, Edge Dancer. This is a 2.5 installment in between um, Words of Radiance and uh, Oathbringer. I would say definitely top tier. I mean, <sighs> everything he writes, it's just like he has writing down Brandon Sanderson has writing down to a science. He almost cannot mess up at this point. Next up, <sighs> Daisy Parker. Do not remember this book at all. <laughs> uh, basically, is this, I, I honestly couldn't even tell you. I'm gonna be honest with you, but I do remember it being okay. <laughs> what? I, I did not. No, no, that, can, that does not work. I have no I'm idea. serious. I have no idea what this book is. I have, you know, I've never read it, but you can't remember it. If nothing stuck out to you, it has to be, I wish I didn't have to that was Rob. Yeah, but it's kind of like the How can you recommend left. a book to somebody or say that it was good if you don't remember because anything? I, it was really early in the year and I like, I really did feel, like, trust me, I remember how I felt about a book a lot more than I remember the book itself sometimes. And I'm telling you, that book was I. Uh, Only the Dead by Jack Carr. It's another one of those uh, kind of like Jack Reacher, David Baldacci books, uh, spy, you know, international mystery man of action uh it was i the, they all just start really really blending in together the terminal list was a little bit different and that's why it kind of grabbed everyone's attention but after that they I mean, kind of they, they it's not just repetitive they just start blending in together my turn all right so iron flame oh here we go this the... is another one of those uh, uno reverse Cards. Sequel to Fourth Wing well, by Rebecca Well, you put it as Dallas. high as you want to put it because you know I'm going to bring it down. No, no. It wasn't as good as Fourth Wing and my true opinion of Fourth Wing was mind-blowing. So I'll put Iron Flame at a solid top tier. Ah. Uh, there you go. No. Much you better. did that just on purpose. I didn't do it on purpose. To be honest with you, I do feel like Fourth Wing was better. I think that Iron Flame did get a little bit more convoluted. It's kind of like one That's of That's the word, convoluted. Convoluted. Uh, and it's kind of like what I was talking about, the how the Red Rising series actually did this so much better. It actually has a plan how it's going to scale up. Where in Fourth Wing, Fourth Wing, the original book was already kind of a pretty big scale and then this one she was just like okay i gotta get bigger and bigger and bigger and more characters and more things going on and more magic that i can't really explain concisely and that people aren't actually gonna understand how it completely works without having to reread and reread and make scantrons and charts not as gratifying it it doesn't have to get so much bigger and if it is gonna get bigger do it gradually do it over two three books anyway i still enjoyed it i'm sure very, you did. very very much i'm sure you enjoyed it a lot more. Yes. Oh, look, that's you because I no, read that isn't. in 2022. You read oh, that last year. Oh, okay. So, The Invisible Life of Addy LaRue. <sighs> I'm gonna say it was I. I'm gonna say it was I. Um, I just, that book, at least for me, it was just really, really disappointed. It, it actually feels like a book that's missing scale. I'm talking about a character that, you know, makes a deal with the demon devil and then gets to live forever and yet her life is all not all that special she you know she lives through all this history and yet is not very involved with any of it it's just she's just kind of living her life as a person that can't be remembered by other people i mean it's yeah did you move it up all right that's fair that's fine <laughs> The Dead Romantics by Ashley Preston. This was a really fun Halloween fall uh, read that I really enjoyed the writing. I really enjoyed the story. So I'm kind of torn between, was it I or was it top tier? You know what, considering 
Oh, I really, really did like this one. Don't do it. Don't do it because I'm gonna have to read it just to bump it down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it at, at top tier. I really, really liked it that much. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't it. deserve it, but in my heart, it does. Sometimes you just like things. The Cuban Affair by Nelson DeMille. Very, very fun. I think you'd like this one. I think, I think I might, yeah. Yeah, I liked his writing style. He's very concise, very to the point, but um, a lot of fun, this one. Um, again, it's, he's like, um, he, main character lives in the Florida Keys and he's kind of um, hired to run a mission on his uh, boat to, um, in Cuba. So some international fun. It's a treasure hunt, treasure hunt. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it gives uh, Matthew McConaughey and uh, Kate Hudson vibes, but a little more serious just because you're dealing with a lot of the political um, happenings and the relations between Cuba and America. So um, definitely a little more of a higher stake there. It's pretty good. I'll All give right. it all right. I'll do the next ones. Uh, the Measure, what is it, Nikki Ehrlich? Can't mm -hmm. believe I remember this often. Um, I think this one We was... both read this one this year. Well, I'm going to say, I'm going to say it was I. Right. Although I almost wish I didn't, I DNF'd it just because it's a really, really, it's a, one of those books that actually does have the scale and then just ends up being about yeah. just average people's problems okay. and doesn't really go all that deeply into this massive premise. And it just ends up being kind of disappointing. The ending is though quite satisfying. Although it's like right there at the very end, like the last two pages are very satisfying. So I gotta give it for that, but ah, it's almost right there. It's almost, it's almost like you don't need to read it. Sorry. Yeah, I would have put it in the exact same place. Okay. I think I liked it a little more than he did, but I would still put it at height. Next up. Oh, you know where this is going. The Three Body Problem series coming out on March 21st. Seeing the trailers, it's done. It's being done by the same people that did Game of Thrones. On Netflix though. On Netflix. And uh, it actually, I have to say, as much as I'm kind of a pessimist, it actually looks pretty good, pretty interesting. I have some faith. Uh, let's see how it goes. But anyway, this is honestly a book that was life-changing. I think that this is probably the best sci-fi series that I've ever read. All right, and then next up is yours. When We Left Cuba. Actually, let's go with, well, fine. Well, yeah, let's go with here. Next Year in Havana by Chanel Clayton. I've talked to death about this book and about how much I personally related to it, a beautiful um, Cuban-American girl story. It's fantastic, highly recommended, super insightful. Um, and then the rest of the series, basically it's um, all about, each book is about a different sister in the Perez family and their kind of their story and their background. When we left Cuba, honestly, I almost did like it just as much as next year in Havana or maybe even more. I love these two so much. So I'm going to go personally with mind blowing just because for me, it was a very personal experience to read a first firsthand fictional historical fictional um, perspective of what happened in the revolution in 1959 in Cuba. So definitely I would say eye opening and mind blowing for me just because everything I've ever heard from my grandmother and grandparents was pretty much detailed in this beautiful story. So um, for me personally, mind blowing, maybe other people won't find it mind blowing. They'll find it a fantastically written story. But for me personally, I have to put it mind blowing. Both of those. Mm, gotcha. the, then that's the first one and the second one. So I actually made a mistake and I actually uh, uploaded the three body problem uh, first one up twice, but that just shows how much I like it. I put it on there twice, just so I could put it in mind blowing Again, twice. twice. Yeah. All right, next up is me. I'm gonna go on a little bit of a ring. Uh, trust, uh, wish I wouldn't have finished this one. Uh, it was just very uh, forgettable. It has a twist on it that you see coming a mile away and it's just, you kind of finish reading it and you don't actually understood why you read it or what the point was. So definitely we'll put it there. I have no idea why it's getting this much praise. Maybe I should reread it. Maybe there's something I missed, but I don't think so. <laughs> so let's just do this in order, but First up, we got Brandon Sanderson, The Storm of Light Archive, a series that everyone was always talking about. And I thought there's no way that this lives up to the hype. I looked it up. It was 55 hours of listening. One of the <laughs> longest books I've ever read, probably one, the longest book I've ever read. And my God, it lives up to the hype. This is incredible. I don't know how he manages to write a book that's top 55. Top tier, not mind blowing? No, yeah, I, th I think it was, it was top tier. The Way of Kings. 
The Way of Kings. I, I think it was definitely top tier. Next up is the second one in the series, which is Words of Radiance. And the only reason why I'm putting The Way of Kings as a top tier is because Words of Radiance was just as long and so much better that it has to be, there has to be a difference there. Like this has to be mind blowing. And then The Way of Kings has to be, you know, top tier because there was definitely a disparity there. Like I enjoyed Words of Radiance so much. You're talking about a book that's again, 50, 55 hours of listening. And it literally felt like it had the pacing of a feature film. Something tells me you're gonna get me those books for Valentine's Day. I should probably should do that. I haven't bought books in so long though. It's kind of a hump I have to get over. Oh, I almost want to put The Way of Kings up there too though. I say do it. Yeah, we're I'm, still gonna, being, I'm gonna do it. I'm we're gonna still do being it. super. I'm gonna do it. They're so amazing. They're we're, so we're amazing. being super selective. It's just so no, but you should. Mind blowing or like life changing books. Right, books and we are, are like, being super selective. And look how few you know. mind blowing books there are from last year. <coughs> Take note of that. The Way of Kings definitely mind blowing. I changed my mind. <laughs> All right, we've got Carrie Soto's Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Top tier. Art. You were raving Top about tier. This I was raving, and I really, really like her writing style. She's just such a great writer. I don't know. Now I want to be a tennis star. Like we've been playing pickleball lately, and That's I'm just not, like, it's not the same. I'm sorry. Not at I, all. It's, the wager is basically like a historical retelling of the story about the this ship uh, back in I don't know, like pirate times. And uh, basically, the, it's just the story of a shipwreck. It's actually pretty engaging, way too many characters and a little bit written, a little bit too dry. But I would still say that it's I just because the story is just so incredible. The Dark Forest, which is the follow up to the three body problem. And guess what? Yeah, it's, it's mind blowing. This one even more so than the first one. There is a part at the end of it that maybe it was just a concept in sci-fi that I had never heard of but it really does blow your mind and it literally changes the way that you think about the universe at least it did for me it this series it's ugh, ugh. all right now we've got uh lessons in chemistry by bonnie garmus i believe is how her name goes oh my god you're gonna put it there yeah. ouch mm -hmm. it was rough it was rough to get through i just didn't find the characters at all believable i have spoken about why i didn't like it in detail in other videos but basically it just it wasn't for me. Didn't enjoy it at all. Gave it its fair shot, read it all the way through, was very open-minded and thoughtful about it. It just rubbed me the wrong way. It didn't leave a great taste in my mouth. I just didn't enjoy it. And um, it's not that I wish I DNF'd it. It's that, yeah, I read the whole thing and it was rough. It was rough. <laughs> Next up, this is actually one of mine. This is actually kind of a controversial book because it does touch on like a social, um, like a controversial social topic. Um, I felt like it was kind of trivial for the most part until the very end that there is kind of like a twist that you kind of don't see coming. I just don't like the way that it kind of uh, mixed in like a social dialogue mixed in with like supernatural things. So I'm going to just say it was I not not I don't regret reading it. I'm going to say the same thing about Love and Other Words by Christina Loren. I do really like this author. I've been reading more and more of her books recently. This one everyone says is like one of her best. It was really good, but I do believe this is an older one and it's become kind of a trope that a lot of books since then have kind of overdone. So maybe that's why I didn't find it as compelling as maybe people did when it first came out. It's just, I feel like I've read the same story a million times. Um, that being said, it was enjoyable, but there's nothing to me top tier about it. So I'm gonna leave it at I. I, I, I know. Why? Why? Love Pamela. I ran out of things to read and it was five hours long and I thought, huh, let me read this. Maybe Pamela Anderson is not who we think she is. She's exactly who we think she is. And uh, I wish I would have not finished reading it because there was there was nothing. So did you, you liked it more there. than the... Yeah, at least it didn't, you know, great on my social and gotcha. moral compass. Gotcha. Uh, All right, Malibu Rising, another Taylor Jenkins read favorite by a lot of people. And Taylor Jenkins Reid, like I've said, is now one of my favorite authors of all time. This is my least favorite from her. Felt like this book didn't have much going on. Very forgettable. Um, family drama, superficial, surface level style book. I just didn't like it at all. So I'm actually gonna have yeah. to put it at wow. Wish I Dean it. I wish I would have read something else. I wish she would have come out with something else. You know, I have to be 
make an observation here. You are way hard. There's two possibilities here. Mm -hmm. Either you are way harsher than I am, or you just read a lot more bad books than I do. Because out of that was rough, I only have one in there. You have three. And out of mind blowing, I have all of them except two. You had a, well, we've spoken about this. You had a really good 2023. I, yeah, had but a I very didn't, I didn't put any. There was books I didn't like, but I didn't think any of them were rough. No, they were rough. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. I was actually very pleasantly surprised. I had heard about this author. I'm actually gonna say that this book is actually top tier. Did not like the ending so much. I felt like it was an ending that was made to be a sad cap on an already very sad book. But this is a book that does reflect real life and that will give you a very good taste of it. And it will show you some characters that are going through it that you can, that can teach you a lot and you will learn a lot from them. Um, what is it? Uh, Tom Felton, Beyond the Wand or something like that. Uh, wish I wouldn't have finished this book. The I only reason, that. the absolutely only reason why you would read this book is if you have a crush on this guy. Aside from that, he's another Hollywood star. There's nothing exceptional about it. If you could think of the stereotype of a Hollywood child actor, that's it. That's it. You know, we're talking about like young fame, some adventure, drug and alcohol problems, trying to redeem himself, ultimately does blah, 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 blah. Hmm. And then fades into obscurity. Oh, this one's here. This is an offer from a gentleman by Julia Quinn, which is the third book in the Bridgerton series, which I know a lot of people find those books completely ridiculous. And you know what? Maybe they are, but they bring me joy. And every February, February, I only read romances because of course. But you only read one of them at a time? But I read one, one a, of them one a year? year? Yeah, I read like one a year. So like, you gotta space out the suck. So this is the third one. So this is, that was the third year that I've read um, a Julia Quinn Bridgerton novel. Actually, it was one of my favorite ones. It was just so charming and so sweet. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna leave it at I. All right, this is actually one of the first books I read early on in the year, and it was uh, by uh, John Green, I think, the same writer as the Fault on Our Stars or whatever. Yeah, the Fault, not his brother. Um, and it's the Apothecarian's review. It's just basically a bunch of short essays about the way he sees the world. Actually, very entertaining. Some insight. He's very neurotic though, uh, John Green. so I don't yeah. share a lot of his sentiments about a lot of things. Just seems like a person that's just scared and anxious about everything. everything. And so it's just kind of like, but anyway, uh, someone, but I'm actually going to say it was, I, it was actually kind of enjoyable and, and charming and you know, it's cute. I can see why people like his writing. Alrighty. We've got our last days in Barcelona, another Chanel Clayton book. Um, not as great as Next Year in Havana or When We Left Cuba, but definitely still top tier. This is about the third sister, Isabel. Highly recommend this author, guys. She has so many books um, and many more that I want to read in 2024. Just really love historical fiction. It's something that I love. And considering it's got that added layer of, um, you know, Cuban heritage. Mm -hmm. Of course, how am I not gonna love it? So that was definitely top tier. Then we've got One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle. This is the same author who wrote In Five Years, which I love that novel. Um, this one was not, nowhere near as good. I actually read this book on the flight to our Italian vacation in the summer. So it was kind of cute. Um, Hashtag homo brag. But not even, I don't even think it was I. I think it was more, mm, I'll leave it at. I, but almost wish I DNF'd it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Yeah, I could have read something probably better. So let's do wish I DNF'd it. Um, maybe you skip just, this one. Maybe you should just read whatever I'm reading. Maybe that's what you that should do. That hasn't gone historically well either, babe. Yeah, I read, well, I'm trying to say, I read way better books than you, it seems. Okay, you had a good year this year. That's what I'm saying, just read whatever I'm reading. Okay, but you don't read enough romance. <sighs> All right, we're gonna end this with a bang. <laughs> Death's End, which is the final book in The Three Body Problem. Like, you, every single book, after the second book, you think, wow, that got, that got epic, the, the scale blew up, 
I don't see where this is going. Oh, it's gonna get bigger and it's gonna make almost total sense. By the end of it, you almost don't believe where that book went, but it went there and you, you accept it because again, the author just mapped out that story so well and he just knew how he was gonna climb that ladder and just keep expanding that world and expanding that world, expanding the concepts and just kind of easing you into these new ideas. And in all honesty, the Three Body Problem series is probably the best sci-fi that I think I've ever read. And that comes from, you know, a person that got into reading because of sci-fi. So I'm glad that, you know, I lived in a time where maybe the best sci-fi books were ever written or written, but that, whatever. It's just, it's just your opinion, man. All right, so I'm looking at this list as an overview. Do I feel like the books, you know, towards the top are better than the ones towards the bottom? Does this look right to you? Are there any changes you want to make? Uh, it's just because you want to put only one left, one higher up. Um, well, no, I can't because you brought it down. I would want to put Iron Flame in top tier. <sighs> It's not. Okay. It's not. But it. But then, okay. But I can't put Happy Place in top tier if Iron Flame is an I. Because the thing is, what what it is with me is that for a book to be top tier or mind blowing, it has to be top tier or mind blowing to a lot of people, or at least to be able to see why it'd be mind blowing to someone. I don't see how Iron Flame blows anyone's mind. It is an enjoyable ride, but it doesn't change anything about your life. It doesn't change you in even just the smallest little way. Um, it's just a fun, fun, fun ride. But yeah, the ones that like, seriously, you're going to put a man called Uva next to fourth wing. Yeah. That just doesn't even feel right. Yeah. It, for doesn't. Me it does. For me, it does. <sighs> right. There's two completely different vibes, two completely different experiences, but they were both true. fantastic. But you're going to tell me one's worth more than the other. I'm going to tell you one's worth more than the other. Do you want to really ask me if I could go back? Would I read a man called auto or if I could only have one book, which one it's going to be? Please don't. Yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna ask them. Because it's what I found more enjoyable. At the end of the day, we're not reading for homework here. We're reading to have fun as a hobby. Like if at the end of the day, I enjoyed Fourth Wing as a whole and the, you know, the process of reading it and it got, you know, it was more heart pounding and more suspenseful than a man called Otto that I deeply love. I think that is such a beautifully written novel. But I had a lot of fun with Fourth Wing. And you know, it, it's like, it, now we know that there's gonna be a series and maybe there's gonna be a movie and maybe there's gonna be things I do with my friends and we go out and we have fun with Fourth Wing just because, you know, it's more of an experience. Does that mean that A Man Called Otto is less of a great book? No, but to me, they're both top tier. That's fair. All right, so then this is it guys. This is our tier ranking of everything Guillermo and I both read in 2023 from mind growing all the way to that was rough. It's a lot of fun and not only that, but you can literally send the screenshot to anybody and be like, hey, look, this is one of the books that, you know what I like the most about this is that I really like what we did that you could bring it up or down because then it really does kind of meld our two ratings to the point that it's not just what we think is top tier mind blowing, it's what we both think is top tier mind blowing. Alrighty guys. Well, we hope you enjoyed. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We do have a lot more content coming. We are officially back from our wedding haze, back from our honeymoon. Yes, we have a life now again. We are no longer planning a wedding. <laughs> that is just eats everything. You can actually have things now and do things now. And uh, we have a lot more time on our hands. Kind of, not really, not so much, but we're gonna make time for you guys and for this channel because we're having an absolute blast. So make sure to subscribe and uh, thanks for joining us on our book date. Cheers guys and uh, happy 2024. Me too. <laughs>